after months of informing the rest of us that Ukraine's territorial integrity is more important than our own, it looks like the Biden administration may finally be getting the conflict it has longed for. Multiple outlets are reporting tonight that Russian military units may soon move across the border into eastern Ukraine. There are a number of credible indications of this, including the fact that Russian ground forces appear to be heading from training areas to assembly points. At the White House, officials have said they expect the Russians to move imminently within days. They've been saying that for quite some time, but this feels a little different, which is why we're bringing it to you tonight. According to Politico, Joe Biden has told fellow NATO members that day could be February 16th. That's next Wednesday. We'll see. In the meantime, at a briefing today, the National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan called for American citizens to leave Ukraine right away. We encourage all American citizens who remain in Ukraine to depart immediately. We want to be crystal clear on this point. Any American in Ukraine should leave as soon as possible and in any event in the next 24 to 48 hours. We obviously cannot predict the future. We don't know exactly what is going to happen. But the risk is now high enough and the threat is now immediate enough that this is what prudence demands. So a good number of the Americans Jake Sullivan just referred to currently serve in the U.S. military as well as in various intelligence agencies. Fox News reported that as of a few days ago, there are more than 300 American troops in Ukraine, including some unspecified number of special operations forces. If a hot war does indeed begin, all of these Americans will be in danger of being killed. So the question is, will our troops leave before the shooting starts? This show asked the DOD spokesman John Kirby that question today. Quote, as of this moment, Kirby replied, they are still there. So when will they get out, we asked. Kirby wouldn't say. Whatever happens between Russia and Ukraine, the United States will be at the center of it, and that's worrisome. It's not hard to imagine how the next few days could go very wrong very fast. Russian troops kill American troops, inadvertently or not, and suddenly we're at war with Russia, a nuclear-armed nation whose military is stronger than all the armies we fought over the past 50 years combined. Fighting Russia is not the same as droning Muammar Gaddafi. It could quickly become a war we couldn't control. Our side of that war would be overseen by the same generals who failed to beat the Taliban, guerrilla fighters and sandals who don't use toilet paper. To be clear, the United States military is superb, but the people who run it are not. That's not some outlier opinion. It's demonstrably true. Given that fact, you've got to wonder if the Biden administration's current wild posturing, and it is wild, is it worth the risk? We're open-minded on that question. If it's worth fighting Russia, tell, tell us how it's worth it. Explain how joining a conflict in progress in Eastern Europe would benefit the United States, not just benefit Joe Biden, who's obviously desperate for distraction from his domestic disasters, but how would war with Russia make us stronger and more prosperous? That's a fair question. It's the central question. And while you're at it, tell us why, if the Russians are such a grave threat to Europe, the Europeans seem a lot less concerned than we are. Biden keeps suggesting that Vladimir Putin wants to swallow Western Europe. If we don't act now, they'll be speaking Russian in Dusseldorf. But if that's true, why aren't the Western Europeans scrambling to defend themselves? They could certainly afford to. Germany is one of the richest countries in the world. In many ways, Germans have a higher living of sta standard of living than we do. Yet after 80 years, we are still paying for their defense. Is there a good reason for that? Could it be that defending Western Europe from Russia is a pretext for other goals, goals that remain largely hidden from the American public? Again, it is worth asking those questions and then demanding clear and logical answers to them. In fact, it's essential to do that. A lot hangs in the balance. In the current environment, however, it's not easy. Skepticism is immediately denounced as disloyalty. Ask why we ought to fight Putin and the hyenas on CNN will accuse you of working for Putin. Take it from us. We're going to keep asking anyway. For a rational conversation on this subject, we're honored tonight to be joined by a rational person, the former Democratic Congresswoman from Hawaii, Tulsi Gabbard. Congresswoman, thanks so much for coming on tonight. Thank you. So let's just, and it's hard to know what to believe always, and especially now, but let's just stipulate, agree to agree, that it seems likely we could see some conflict between Russia and Ukraine soon. How should we view that? Oh, well, first of all, Biden, President Biden could end this crisis and prevent a war uh, with Russia by doing something very simple, guaranteeing that Ukraine will not become a member of NATO. 
because if Ukraine became a member of NATO, that would put U.S. and NATO troops directly on the doorstep of Russia, which, as Putin has laid out, would undermine their national security interests. Uh, the reality is that it is highly, highly unlikely that Ukraine will ever become a member of NATO anyway. So the question is, why doesn't President Biden and, and NATO leaders actually just say that yes. and guarantee it? Which, which begs the question of, of why are we in this position then? Uh, if, if the answer to this and preventing this war from happening is, is very clear as day, and, and, and really it just points to one conclusion that I can see, which is they actually want Russia to invade Ukraine. Why would they? Because, number one, it gives the Biden administration a clear excuse to go and levy draconian sanctions, which are a modern-day siege against Russia and the Russian people. And, number two, it cements this Cold War in place. Uh, you know, the, the military-industrial complex is the one that benefits from this. They clearly control the Biden administration. Warmongers on both sides in Washington have been drum drumming up these tensions. If, if they get Russia to invade Ukraine, then, uh, again, it locks in this new Cold War. The military-industrial complex starts to make a ton of more money than, than they have been in fighting uh, al-Qaeda or, or making weapons for al-Qaeda. And who pays the price? The American people pay the price. The Ukrainian people pay, pay the price. The Russian people pay the price. It undermines our own national security. But the military-industrial complex that controls so many of our politicians wins, and they, they run to the bank. You've seen this from both sides as a lawmaker and a member of our armed forces, so I think you've got a credible view on this. I, I just have to ask, they've been telling us with increasing hysteria, Wendy Sherman and Jake Sullivan and the president himself, that the threat here is to Western Europe, that Vladimir Putin has, has aims on our allies in Western Europe. Why don't the Europeans seem as afraid as our leaders are, if that's true? I think that is a legitimate question that no one in the Biden administration or the NATO leadership has responded to in any way. Uh, it seems they've forgotten that they are supposed to be accountable to the American people, that they answer to the American people. And yet they, they have failed to answer this very, very simple question in justifying why we are continuing to send more troops uh, to Europe, why they are continuing to escalate tensions, why they are continuing to push for something and in, uh, you know, making Ukraine a member of NATO that, again, is highly unlikely to ever happen. And if it did happen, it would undermine our own national security and our own right. country's interests. I, I, there doesn't seem an upside. I mean, no one has been able to explain why Americans should want Ukraine to join NATO. Is there something that we're missing here? Is there some benefit to the United States from having that happen? I've looked at this carefully, Tucker, and I have yet to find any benefit that a, a political leader has used or could use to justify this to the American people. All you hear is like, well, we have to defend democracy. We have to defend this democratic country of Ukraine. But as you know very well, uh, this current president, you know, shuts down, politi arrests political opposition, throws them in yep. jail, shuts down TV stations that are critical to him. Uh, I, I have a hard time seeing how President Biden or anyone can say with an honest face, we are defending democracy. And the reason is because our own government has publicly supported these authoritarian actions by the Ukrainian president in shutting down their own political opposition. And it begs the question, uh, this sounds familiar to some of the things that unfortunately we're seeing play out right here at home. I was, about, I was just about to say, it sounds like their kind of democracy. Tulsi Gabbard, I, th that's about the smartest analysis I've heard, and I really appreciate you laying it out for us. Thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.